welcome everyone again and uh, let's start with this uh, sdxs fundamental course and this is your first session and in this session we are going to discuss these two main key topics of uh, cisco sdxs and uh, cisco dns center uh, introduction right so this this total topics you can see on the uh, ppt uh, so sdxs uh, solution components wireless architecture how you can do the network changes with the help of automation. Uh, what is the fabric? How you can deploy the fabric within the DNS center? And what are the key use case of assurance and how you can leverage DNS center as a platform by using different type, uh, different kind of APIs and uh, uh, you can configure it with the help of uh, different adapters. So. Today, we are going to discuss these two main topics, SDXS uh, uh, and DNS Center introduction, right? And uh, I'm not monitoring the chat, but if you guys are having any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself uh, and ask questions. I'm trying to give all the possible answers here only. And in case if I need to solve something, then definitely I'll get back to you. Okay, so let's start. Before anyone Hello. is having any questions, uh, give the recording permission, sir. Uh, what? Recording permission, so that we can record from our end. Uh, actually, I'm recording, but like uh, I, I will share the recording with you after the class, right? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Uh, that's Susil here. Okay, guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, by trailer, that uh, class will be recorded. Individual recording will not be given as a thing. Okay, 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 thank you. Thank later you. Later we'll yeah. Thanks, Sushil. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Please go. Okay, so let's start, guys. Uh, so uh, let me give a brief introduction of DNS Center. So uh, in this particular topic, we are going to conduct a couple of networking principles, which uh, Cisco is uh, using to implement uh, new intent-based networking on the campus infrastructure. What are the D, uh, key deployment models of DNS Center? Because DNS Center has different versions and different scale factors. And based on that, we need to implement DNS Center in our topology. So we, we are going to discuss that as well today. Uh, then SDXS overview, what is SDXS, what is fabric, uh, what are the key components, and uh, then uh, the uh, DNS Center graphical user interface. So for that, we are uh, waiting for the lab. Once our lab is ready, I'll show you and I'll walk you through the lab and we'll help you to understand what are the key pillars and how you can navigate across the different tabs. So in traditional network, uh, you know, right, like we have core distribution and access. Uh, so this is the kind of topology which we used to have in traditional enterprise uh, infrastructure. And it is more focused on the hardware part. So it is hardware centric where we need to configure each and every hardware manually. We need to go box by box, log into the device, uh, take the CLI and do the configuration. And uh, any software change, anything you can do through the uh, uh, device by device or hop by hop basis. Uh, and everything is manual. And whenever it is manual, it leads to the error prone network configuration and uh, uh, Automate, uh, network configuration and changes, right? So that is the most uh, challenging uh, thing, I would say, uh, in traditional network and uh, the fragmented security. Because uh, if you are implementing any of the policy-based infrastructure in traditional network, then you need to, sorry, any anyone has any question? Okay, yeah. So in traditional network, like uh, if you see, we used to have, those type of access list and uh, policies which we implement and configure on the uh, hop by hop basis and due to that our tkms are increasing and the ever growing demand of new users bring your own device concepts makes this particular traditional network in irrelevant in some sense so uh, cisco has introduced uh, intent based networking technology and uh, it has the uh, specific controller based architecture where your controller is DNS center appliance. And with the help of a single appliance, you can manage your all of the network infrastructure, all of your network devices. And uh, this is not just only management purpose. You can do a much more than that 
much more than management uh, we are going to discuss that in the later course right so those are the traditional uh, network challenges you can see and we need to overcome and we need to uh, solve those challenges uh, with the help of this new newly intent based networking portfolio so far so good any questions we are trying we will try to make this session more interactive and uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask okay hi sir um hi sir rashmi here yeah rashmi go ahead. uh can you please explain this fragmented in their security part uh, how security is impacted if we are having manual infrastructure sure. or traditional infrastructure sure so like see if you if you want to implement any of the access list access policy right so you are implementing those access list access policy on the uh, device by device and suppose uh, most of the time network engineers what do uh, they keep on adding network access list and they uh, they may forget some of the uh, network access list uh, to remove uh, based on the different uh, scenario and that list of the acls are keep on increasing and that leads to increasing the tcam uh, tcam size and due to that like some of the device has some of the access list some of the device has not some of the access list and due to you can find that it is fragmented uh on the security aspect so probably identical configuration may not be found uh if you are going with the manual approach and uh, if an employee is doing any of the network security related changes on any of the device and if that employee is leaving that organization then next employee who is handling the network infrastructure they may not well aware about the specific access list because those access list are based on the ip address like source ip and destination ip and uh, it may difficult to identify an identical uh, configuration make them identical configuration right uh, so that is the meaning of fragmented uh, security so we are we'll going to see the use case how we can get rid of that uh, particular challenge okay sir thanks sir sir there i have another doubt like yeah. when we have a uh, three different controllers like orchestration plane and management plane and control plane and data plane like four planes actually so like in the nexus we don't have that many planes like just one dnex center only which control everything which controls all basically yeah so uh, you are referring to sd wan i guess so in sd wan yeah. you have your orchestration your uh, data management and control here only uh, we have three major plane like your control plane data plane and policy plane so the policy plane is important when we talk about security because ice is the critical component when you are talking about sd access so we are going to discuss that as well in later slide or in upcoming sessions yeah but sure but uh, for all those planes in sd wan we have each separate device like uh, for as orchestration there is a v bond for yeah. management as but here i think we have only the dnex center only right correct correct so for uh, this sd access you have a dns center as a brain and it mm -hmm. will do all the orchestration uh, it will uh, uh, get the business intent from the user or network engineer uh, mm -hmm. on its gui and mm -hmm. by taking the business intent it will mm -hmm. try to implement that business policies business uh, configuration whatever the uh, policy compliance with that organization it will try to implement to the network devices so yeah there is a single pane of glass which is your dns center but some of the device role may change so in traditional network your access distribution and core would be the mm -hmm. same but here in sd access that device role would be changed like control plane node uh, border node and edge node so we are going to discuss that as well sure sure it's in later course right correct correct cool so uh, as i said dns center is the control i mean uh, central piece or i would say orchestration uh, device where it is a single pane of glass where all of your devices are uh, onboarded and with the this particular controller you can use the uh, design policy provision and assurance so these are these are the four main pillars i would say and there is one pillar as well which is called your platform 
uh, that will uh, we are we will discuss that in upcoming slide. But yeah, these are these four pillars are the main pillars when we talk about DNS central. So uh, why we need that? I mean, uh, what is the purpose to have a single pane of glass or this type of controller? Uh, anyone has any idea? Just to simplify it and access it centrally. Correct. Correct. That is the key catch, I would say, uh, to simplify because a day day by day our network is increasing, our applications and our, our users are more demanding, uh, and new concepts like PYOD, work from home, and uh, remote uh, branch offices are increasing day by day, and our network is increasing in a rapid way. So to monitor, to maintain, to automate, to onboard such devices. And to uh, manage those devices, we need some sort of tool, or I would say some sort of controller. So DNS Central is a hardware-centric appliance. It is based on UCS series server, and uh, it comes with another model, which we will discuss in upcoming slide. But yeah, that is a physical box you can use inside your data center or uh, inside your network infrastructure. And it gives the uh, single pane of glass, which is your GUI, GUI. Uh, with the help of that GUI, you can take the end-to-end -end health information of your network devices in the real time. So when I say in the real time, that means like uh, one of your router goes down or one of your switch goes down, or suppose one of your access point is not working as proper. Uh, so you can get the insight and uh, suppose one of the user specific user is not able to access specific application, right? So how you can troubleshoot it? So in traditional network, we generally start with the ping, reachability, routing and switching, basic troubleshooting things, right? So same thing you can do uh, in DNS center, but here the concept is we need to get rid of the CLI and we are more focused on the GUI. So everything, you can do from the GUI itself. And in DNS Center, there are a couple of tools which you can leverage to utilize those troubleshooting uh, steps. And it also do some sort of uh, uh, remediation and uh, guided base uh, uh, assurance, right? So uh, those are the things, those are the key points, I would say. Another important topic is like automation. So most of the time, when we want to do some sort of automation. So automation is a very big term, I would say. So in network engineering field, uh, when we say automation, uh, we can do some sort of configuration on the device automatically with the help of any script. We can do onboarding of those device with the help of some script. We can uh, provision any of the device, right? with the help of some tool or script or whatever, like Ansible, Python, most of the network engineers are using nowadays. But here in DNS Center, everything can be automated uh, with the help of this GUI, where you need to create a kind of workflow. There is a specific workflow to automate the device. So suppose you have a couple of devices which, you are, uh, which are coming or which those devices are going to come to your network infrastructure, right? So most of the time in traditional network, what happens? Raking, stacking, cabling, and uh, then any uh, field engineer go to go to site and then it connects the device, then a vanilla template or basic reachability template, uh, that particular engineer copied from the USB to their device, and then your device get connected and get onboarded on the network. That is the standard procedure. Uh, generally, uh, most of the traditional network has, but in DNS center, it, it is totally zero touch. When okay. I say totally, okay, yeah. if uh, you are you are saying that uh, we can do uh, ping and trace route from the DNAC, do you uh, do you compare that on NetBrain? It is a tool to use the network monitor and, and found found that um, found the network environment. Like if you are giving IP address, it will it will, it will uh, trace the route and it will give some graphical um, views of the network. Is, the, yeah. is it like that or, or it is? Correct. So correct. The same thing, uh, you can get uh, information like graphically, like when you do some sort of trace route, uh, you will see 
your traffic is moving from one hop to other hop, other hop to other hop, and that hop is also located. It has the specific location, like your access point is located on any of the floor, and your user is behind that particular access point, and you are trying to trace the specific application, right, which is behind your data center. Then okay. a trace route application inside DNS center will show the complete path, including the physical location of the device or nodes. Uh, apart from that, ping. So yeah, ping is a normal uh, thing. And uh, in troubleshooting, in assurance, you have that option where you can see the reachability. And also, it has the option of guided remediation. So it, it, it gives you that level of insight when any of the interface goes down or any of the server is not reachable. It, it starts giving you the command, like, do this do run show IP OSPF, do run show IP EIGRP, do this, do that. So most of the time you don't need to worry much on the troubleshooting workflow, rather than you can focus on much more productive work. So that is the main uh, catch, uh, I would say, uh, about this technology. Okay. So uh, as we are discussing about the automation, so when I say zero touch, that means uh, uh, it is completely automation, I, I automate, uh, automation thing where your new device can be onboarded on the network inventory, or I would say on the DNS center, uh, zero touch. So uh, we will discuss that. Uh, we have two options, plug and play and uh, ZTP. But ZTP is more focused on the SD1 side. Here in SDXS, we are using plug and play, uh, and plug and play protocol is a unique protocol. So that is one thing. Uh, then policy enforcement. So when you identify a specific user, like you have so many users and users category, right? Like your uh, guest users, your contractors, your uh, employee, your uh, HR team, your finance team. So, so many users and so many roles. So each and every user has different set of policy. So to implement that policy, it is, uh, it will, it is giving you the kind of construct where you can create the policy for specific user rather than specific IP. So the main idea is like identity-based segmentation and policy enforcement. So we will focus more on the identity of user, like who is that user rather than specific IP address. So that is the other part. And for analytics, right? As I said, assurance is the key piece. So in assurance, we have a couple of dashboards where we can see the client health. When I say client health, that means your wired and wireless traffic or endpoints, like your wired endpoints as well as wireless endpoints. Uh, then network health, that means your network devices, including your routers, which is access point. You can get the health related uh, inside, troubleshooting related uh, steps and all the context where you can uh, get to resolve those issues and even some sort of uh, alert as well, right? Uh, then application. So most of the time we may see that whenever any application is not working or if any la layer one team or any uh, basic support team calls a network layer three team that, hey, this application is not working, then most of the time we try to check with the reachability and all if reachability is good, then we can just directly shift to the uh, that particular issue to the net application team. Then application is application team will check it's on code and the server hosting thing. But here uh, in assurance, we are getting that application le application level inside where any application is not working or due to some QoS, uh, uh, it is not giving the proper throughput or proper good proper customer experience. Right? Uh, then you can identify that, those type of issues. Uh, so assurance is a uh, very important use case within DNS center. And last, which is your platform. So uh, uh, last, uh, I mean, last uh, use case is platform. So that is the uh, key pillar, I would say, when you want to integrate. Because Cisco has the idea to make this particular appliance as an open source. So whenever uh, you want to do any sort of uh, integration, with DNS Center, like suppose you want to do some sort of ITSM tool integrated with DNS Center, right? Like your service now. So suppose you have a kind of requirement where uh, I would say uh, 
you can create a kind of workflow where any device which needs to be upgrade, upgrade in upcoming days you can create a ticketing service now uh, the ticket goes to the uh, cab review where your peers or network architect review the specific change and based on the maintenance downtime it will approve the uh, they will approve the uh, specific change uh, request in itsm in service now and that service now is integrated with dns center so as and when your change request get approved or your maintenance request get approved your uh, service now can talk to dns center and the particular kick workflow will kick off and then uh, the swim will start initiating the upgrade process so swim is the software image management inside the dns center so you can uh, use that particular tool to upgrade your uh, device images so this is one example one of the example uh, for platform but you can have many more uh, integration with your third party network devices or third party tool like your dashboard or other sort of database you want to see you can integrate that with a uh, platform by while creating the api and software developer kit sdk right am i going too fast too slow is it okay yes, it's perfect fine it's okay 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 cool so when i say uh, a network admin this guy is implementing any of the intent when i say intent means any of the configuration any of the policy that is called intent that is aligned and complies with your business uh, policy your company policy right so this particular network admin wants to implement anything uh, on your network then that intent is go, intent goes to the dns center dns center will translate that intent and it will implement the uh, specific requirement whatever mentioned by the network engineer to the specific network devices whether it is your wireless controller router switches server whatever and once it is uh, implementing it will also share the contextual information to the dns center so dns center is doing two things one it is implementing all the network changes all the network intent on your devices whatever uh, defined by your network engineer and second it will also share its data its telemetry to the dns center so dns center will analyze that data and it will represent a graphical information and different dashboard where based on that you can identify where is the issue and for which hop you need to do some sort of troubleshooting so that is the kind of loop uh, which dns center has uh, when i say loop that is not routing loop or switching loop but yeah i mean uh, this is a kind of cycle you can see the intent is goes intent goes to the network devices and context your information like your syslog netflow other traps are going to dns center it analyze the information and it will uh, give the graphical representation okay. yeah so dns center has four step workflow uh, you can see uh, so your design provision policy and assurance so when i say automation so automation falls under this three category your design provision policy and assurance is the separate piece because in dns center we have two main platforms one is your ncp which is your network control platform second one is ndp which is your network data platform so ndp will manage your assurance related information because it is directly related with data and uh, all the logs all the event triggers from the network devices to the dns center and ncp which is your network control platform is falls under this automation so under automation we have this three main type like design provision and policy so basic requirement for dns center to have is like you should have a kind of design uh, which where where you can define your site site hierarchy like your site would be like uh, san jose 
then uh, the global side would be uh, California or US, suppose, right? Under US, you have your San Jose as a site. Under San Jose, you have different buildings or different area. And under area, you have different building. Under building, you have different floors. Likewise, you can create the hierarchy, site hierarchy. It is really important to have this planning in place when you are first provision or uh, creating the uh, DNS center fabric, or I would say setting up the DNS center. Then your global settings. So global settings means like your AAA server, your DHCP server, your uh, SNMP servers, your NetFlow servers, so many things uh, you can do, like your time uh, related NTP. Uh, so those falls under global settings. When I say site profile, so site profile generally has uh, generally covered the wireless related uh, aspects like your RF profile settings or uh, uh, fre frequency, signal to noise, uh, some of the uh, RF related settings and all. And uh, your uh, other th other than site profile, we have this swim uh, plug and play and DDI. So we are going to discuss that uh, in upcoming uh, sessions. But yeah, on high level, I would say that this is the design where first you need to create the uh, hierarchy, site hierarchy. You need to import your floor map if you are placing any of the access point on the floor to check whether that access point is spreading proper RF or not. Or uh, even there is a specific integration in DNS Central where you can do. And in once you're done with that integration, uh, you can see the live user, which is roaming from one floor to an another floor. You can see it's uh, moving on the floor uh, easily on the DNS center. But that integration will not cover in this course because that is another topic, I would say, uh, which is your DNS space. Uh, that is another controller, uh, I would say, which generally integrate with this uh, uh, DNS center. Now, uh, design is uh, OK. So. Once you're done with design, you need to provision. So first you need to onboard the device. So most of the time what happens, either customer or uh, company has existing device which are compatible with DNS center, right? Or customer or company has new device which are compatible with DNS center, you can onboard. So there are two types of things. So for existing device, you can, directly onboard that device with the help of discovery. So there is a tool within DNS Center. You can use that tool. You just need to have the reachability uh, from your device to DNS Center. That's all. Once reachability is done, uh, it will use, your DNS Center will use the uh, level 15 privilege to log in into that device. It will create the SNMP string. It will create some of the device controllability settings. And then it will onboard the uh, device on the inventory. So there is a that is a one a first step. Second is like your uh, new device, your greenfield devices. So for that you can use the plug and play. So plug and play is another topic. We'll deep deep into that. But uh, on high level, these are the things which falls under the provision. Once your device gets onboarded, you can create the fabric. You can uh, do host onboarding and so many things. Uh, and the third one is policy. So in policy, uh, you can create the virtual network, uh, your ICE, RADIUS, and uh, AAA, your TACAX uh, settings you can create. Your access list, all the access list you can, uh, can uh, create from the DNS center itself. You don't need to go to ICE or any of the AAA server. You just need to go out to the policy tab here, and you can see, uh, here the diagram is very small but yeah there is a policy section under that you can find all the access control uh, and application control information and you can create the virtual network so virtual network means vrf so you can create the vrf and based on that you can segment your network traffic last not the least assurance so as i said assurance would be used to give the insight like issues and trends ongoing issues and trends then performance related KPIs are also me measured in the assurance and proactive troubleshooting. So as I said, proactive means like whenever any fault may find, 
uh, or found on any of the network device or client or any of the thing it gives the notification it also gives the uh, mailer alert if you have configured that and uh, it also provide the uh, guided remediation and in some aspects it also do the proactive troubleshooting uh, sir uh, govind here uh, yeah. in today traditional network uh, hub and spoke locations in uh, spoke is my office uh, uh, office which is uh, talking to my data center uh, uh, communicating through mpls network so the same way this dns center will work so dns center is a i placed in my uh, data center mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. my hub location i i am putting some devices Sorry. which communicate to the dns uh, center through the mpls network correct yeah so yeah good question uh, so the idea like uh, we need to follow the latency requirement so if you are creating hub and spoke tunnel mpls tunnel from suppose india to london or india to australia then the latency may not meet so to create the kind of fabric you should have the uh, latency requirement uh, adjust or met to the standard cisco standards then and only then you can create the fabric uh, so i would say whenever you are creating any of the fabric or uh, any of the site you can use dns center and you can put that dns center in data center and the minimum uh, latency requirement should match uh, based on the matching you can create the fabric and then start uh, onboard your network device yeah so only the cisco device i can use in my uh, uh, office locations right the in the dna solution uh so uh, that is again good question so uh, i would say I, I would like to give answer in different way so when i say cisco devices so most of the cisco devices will be managed uh provision automation uh, and assurance can be done uh on the cisco device or you can say your dns center can get all the insight from cisco device to the uh dns center but when you are using any of the third party device suppose juniper or uh, hp or uh, whatever like your uh, other device like arista then the device can be seen on the inventory as a part of the workflow inventory management you can also do the swim software upgrade of different vendor devices based on the compatibility matrix but you cannot do everything like whatever you do for cisco device you can't do everything on the other uh, boxes so that is the answer thank you sir Wow. Can we integrate API with this DNA center for that third party devices? Absolutely. So for that, uh, you need to write your own code uh, for that. Uh, and we have so many APIs which are already available in DNA center. And you can go on developer.cisco.com where you can also find uh, lots of APIs are getting created every day uh, by our developers. And developer community right so based on customers requirement or specific individual requirement anyone can write their own api and call the api to dns center and it will work okay Correct. so uh we discussed this like your dns center dashboard which has this design policy provision and assurance and uh, the DNS center appliance is the physical appliance. Uh, you can use the virtual appliance as well, like any of the UCS server you can bought and based on that, you can install the virtual image, but on most of the production network, this is not the ideal way. Uh, and this is not the best way, which Cisco, uh, Cisco is not recommending that uh, thing because it, it gives the scale issues and other issues. Some of the use case may not work. Some of the things may, may not work on uh, soft images uh, because the DNS center image is very heavy image, I would say. And all of the services are containerized. So each and every service has different set of container. And that container is based on the Linux Maglev config uh, platform. So whenever I say SNMP service or your assurance service, your NetFlow service or your uh, any of the service, right? The DNS center has lots of service. Each and every service has different set of containers. 
and different containers are communicating with each other inside DNS center. So in DNS center, we, we have used this uh, Docker Kubernetes and uh, uh, we have kept different types of container uh, for different services. And those containers are integrating and communicating with each other with, uh, with the specific IP. So we need to give the IP address of each and every container and each and every container is communicating with each other container uh, as based on the need uh, with the IP address. So we'll discuss that. What are those two IP address and those are subnets? How you can check, how you can implement when installing or bootstrapping your DNS center. But this is how internal things uh, work, uh, work actually. And the appliance is like your telemetry storage. So any of the contextual data, which I said, like your SNMP, syslog, NetFlow, suppose you want to ensure that your DNS entry appliance is also acting as a NetFlow server or syslog server, then you can just check the box and your DNS center will act as a NetFlow or sys syslog servers as well. So it will hold your data, your NetFlow and syslog data for 14 days. Uh, and then uh, it get updated every 14 days, every after 14 days, right? And if you want historical data, then you can create, you can integrate DNS Center with the platform to external NetFlow server, or you can directly integrate external NetFlow server or syslog server. So your data can uh, transfer to that third party. And uh, network devices and physical and virtual. So yeah, we discussed that as well, like network telemetry, contextual data and application visibility. So network telemetry means your device related information. Contextual data means like your any of the syslog or uh, NetFlow or any of the traps which you have configured on network devices may convert it uh, into the uh, contextual view. And application visibility, like any of the application, your Skype is not working, your WebEx is giving latency or customer is complaining that my website is not working. So you can troubleshoot that as well. So let's uh, double click on the scaling factor, I would say, because uh, we need to focus that uh, when we, we, are, we are trying to implement or bootstrapping the DNS center. So this is your appliance and this comes with three form factors based on the UCS M5 series server. So when I say three form factor, that means three different models, but the functionality of those models remains same. And those device has the preloaded image. So uh, it has image already uh, installed. So you don't need to install anything on uh, new device, the center. So three models are like this, 44 core, 56 core and 112 core. Uh, it is based on the scaling and uh, number of endpoints and how big your network is. Based on that, you can choose the DNS center appliance. So for big enterprise, most of the company go with the Excel version. So for medium and uh, large, I would say appliance, uh, sorry, company, they go with the 56 core and small company, they go generally with 44 core. The functionality will remain same but the scaling factor will change because the number of user this particular DNS center will hosting will low compared to Excel version. Uh, yeah, quick question. Uh, if I have like a 44 core server, can mm -hmm. I implement, can I, you know, uh, like virtualize that in a EXXI server? Yeah. Uh, is, is that possible? Yes, yes, it is possible, it is possible. But when I say like it is possible, you can use for your lab testing or that type of uh, version. As of now, Cisco has not come up with this in production. Like most of the customer are using hardware appliance, which is based on the MCS, you see, uh, sorry, UCS M5 series hardware. So okay. yeah, you can use for your testing and uh, lab purpose, but yeah, ideally it is not recommended. Okay, uh, just for the lab purpose. Okay. Correct. Uh, so the scaling factor decides based on this uh, criteria, like your number of client counts, whether it is wired or wireless count, then your resource requirement, like your uh, CPU or input output uh, 
throughput or i would say bound uh, based on that you can identify and check the compatibility and adjust your requirement and you can go with the specific version or specific model and based on the research resources well, like number of sites number of applications number of vm so that gives you the idea to decide which version or which model you can implement in your company so this is the original photo of a dn1 appliance uh, this is the back side you can see uh, the interface and cabling right so there are a couple of ports mentioned like first is your cloud port second is your management port third one is your cimc port fourth one is your enterprise port and fifth one is cluster port so when i say cloud port uh, so just one second yeah so cloud port is your 10 gbps uh, or i would say a specific port inside dns center and this port is used for redundancy purpose so generally you can implement dns center as a standalone box or you can use the cluster so in cluster you can use three node cluster for high availability purpose so when you are going with the three node cluster architecture you are using this cloud port to interconnect other dns center so that your uh, with with any natural calamity or any disaster if any of the uh, dns center goes down your secondary uh, dns center will become active uh, in high availability situation so this port will be used for cluster purpose then enterprise port so this is again 10 gbps port right so uh, this is again 10 gbps so cloud port is 1 gbps sorry i miss uh, 10 G i missed and say 10 gbps but yeah it is 1 gbps uh, we have 10 gbps two ports only enterprise and cluster for dn1 appliance so we have two appliance two version dn1 appliance and dn2 appliance uh, dn2 appliance is more uh, uh, improved version i would say the asic and other things are improved in dn2 and some of the port name is also changed but uh, this name not cloud port management port cimc this name will remain same uh, but the specific enterprise uh, name like enp1s enp1s0 f0 that name has changed for dn1 and dn2 appliance right so we are talking about dn1 appliance so yeah we have discussed this cloud port for uh, cluster related thing then enterprise port. This is your 10 GBPS port, you can see, and that is for your network adapter port. So this port is used to discover your devices. And with the help of this port, your DNS center will connect to your devices. So whatever you are configuring or whatever you are applying any of the policy, right, that will go to network devices via this port only. So this is the main port where your all, all of your network devices are communicating to DNS center via this port and also the telemetry information. So when DNS center fetches the de details about SNMP or syslog, the telemetry information is also goes to this enterprise port. And uh, another port is like CIMC port. So this is your CIMC port. This port is used for console access of the UCS box. So when you want to do power off, power on remotely, you can use the CIMC port, you can plug in and you can give the IP address, which is accessible inside your network uh, intranet. And uh, you can use CIMC to launch the KVM. And under KVM, you can use the power on, power off and do kind of cold uh, restart and hot restart of the physical appliance. Or even if you want to access uh, the CLI of DNS center, suppose, Megla wizard of DNS center, then you can also go with this port only. Actually, CMC, uh, CMC is a, um, basically like a BIOS settings, right? BIOS upgrade or something. Correct. The, so the, it gives yeah. this, uh, uh, this box console. So it gives the GUI of this UCS box. And on that, that UCS box, you can check fan setting, power setting, so many things. And uh, you have that. Uh, it, uh, uh, this particular maglev wizard where you can launch the kvm and you can access the uh, cli of dns center so there are two ways to access cli of dns center 
either you can SSH the DNS center uh, IP address with specific port of 2222, or you can log into CIMC IP address. You can start the KVM and then you can access the CIMC. Actually, actually, as for the Cisco, that CMC, CMC port is used to access the BIOS settings only. It, it won't give the command prompt of the DNAC. Uh, there is a yeah, but here in this case, you need to launch the KVM, and once you launch the KVM, you can get the access of uh, CLI. Yeah, CLI of uh, that BIOS, BIOS, BIOS settings only. So you you can Correct. you can monitor that uh, uh, that uh, fan speed and uh, disk space and everything you can you can uh, set so it up. Is, but yeah, yeah, it, that is you can monitor with the GUI. But when it, we yeah. launch the KVM, I, I'll show you. I have a slide. I'll show you uh, how you can. Check the but 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 C C M C uh, port C M C port we cannot um, do the function of uh, DNAC uh, application like um, controlling the device controlling the uh, other network device or something like that. That C M C is purely purpose of the only BIOS and the, and the device and the and the you hardware. Can't... No no no. When I say you when I say you can log into D uh, DNS Center C L I that doesn't mean that you are controlling the uh, network devices through the CIMC port. No, the okay. meaning of that is like you are accessing the maglev wizard of DNS center on which your uh, image, DNS center image software has installed. So you can do any of the Linux based troubleshooting or any of the container based troubleshooting when you want to do uh, of DNS center. So you, you have your network device CLI, right? That is another component and yeah. you have DNS center CLI. So when I say DNS center CLI, that means a kind of maglev wizard where you can access the wizard and you can log into the maglev platform. And on that platform, you can do troubleshooting on Linux. The code is uh, accessible, not every uh, every line of code, but the, uh, the command line is accessible through CIMC of DNS center, not network devices. Now uh, we have the management port. So whenever you want out of band management, so for that purpose, you can use management port. So most of the time customer may use that port and it is highly recommended, but some of the customer, if they don't want to use uh, the management port and they want to access the uh, GUI of DN center with enterprise port only, they don't want out of band management, then they can go with that option as well. That is optional and cloud connectivity, cloud port. So cloud port is also important. Sorry, that we have discussed, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. Uh, so for cloud port, uh, I say uh, this is for internet connection. So for swim use case and other use case, you can use the cloud port. And it is highly recommended because all of your uh, iOS, iOS versions, patches, and information getting downloaded from cisco.com uh, through internet connections. And that internet connection get terminated on the cloud port. And the cluster port, as I said, that is used for inter cluster communication uh, for your three node cluster from one DNAC to other DNAC and that DNAC to other DNAC. That's how it gets connected. Anyone has any doubt on this port related information, cabling related? Yes, sir. Okay, so how you can do the cabling? So this is how you can do. Uh, so this is DN2 appliance. See, this is DN2. Some of the name is, has changed. So previously, let, let me go to this site. Cluster port name start with ENP10S0. Here, the name is this ENP94S0 F1, right? But the, the purpose of this port is same. It is cluster port and it solves the functionality of connecting one DNAC to other DNAC in, uh, for the case of high availability. The same like that enterprise port, the functionality remains the same, uh, the name has changed, right? Now, when you are doing any sort of uh, HA cluster, high availability, then you can do this type of connections. Like for cluster, you have one switch, right? For enterprise, you have one switch, and for management, you have one switch. And this switch are uh, uniquely given. I mean, this switch has different uh, VLAN or I would say different subnet 
uh, based on that, you can identify this subnet is different, this subnet is different and all. That's why we have different color codes. So I, I said earlier, right, like uh, DNS center has uh, kind of container and uh, pipelines and uh, it is based on the uh, Kubernetes. So each and every container has different uh, service running on and that service has specific requirement. So the requirement is IP address because suppose my one service wants to communicate to other service, then how it will communicate. However, it is inside the image or inside the Linux platform. But then also, if you have ever come across the Docker kind of thing where uh, you are having different, different types of services in different container and uh, you, are, you want to use those services uh, simultaneously, then you need to give the IP address. Same like that, here you have this cluster service subnet and services subnet. Those two subnets will be used internally to provide the IP address of the containers which are available in DNS center to make sure that your all services are running properly. So for that, you need to give the cluster service subnet and services subnet uh, IP address and uh, your cluster IP address as well, which is required. Enterprise IP port, as I said, that is used for your communication to your network devices, that is also required, and your gateway for management or enterprise. Suppose if you are using only enterprise port, then you need to give the gateway IP address of that. If you are using management port for out of band, you need to give that as a default gateway. Uh, so these are the main subnets uh, or IP addressing, which you need to give. Uh, and for cluster and services subnet, you need to keep in mind that slash 21 subnet you need to give or less than that like slash uh, 19 20, 20 18 15 16 whatever but maximum like uh, sorry minimum is slash 21 you can use because there are so many services so so many ip addressing uh, ip address may required and some of the important ip addresses your dns server ip address and ntp server ip address so these two are reachable. It should be reachable. And only then your uh, DNS center installation can work properly, right? And when you are connecting your cloud port to internet, uh, these are the links. These are the proxy links, or I would say uh, port links, port details, uh, or uh, specific site, which needs to be allowed uh, if you are using proxy. So if you are using internet via proxy, suppose you have firewall uh, and after firewall, you have the internet connection, right? Then on firewall, you need to allow this particular website and this uh, domains to uh, pass through the connection to cisco.com and some of the smart licensing uh, related uh, website internally to Cisco. So this is the MacLed Maglev configuration wizard. When you launch the KVM on CIMC, once you log into CIMC, you have an option to launch the Maglev configuration wizard. This, once you log into that, you can start. Uh, you can see this particular screen as well. But this is the initial screen. Uh, when you bootstrap the DNS center and gets the console of DNS center, you will see this screen, right? But you can also see this screen. Uh, using the CIMC as well. So you can go with this start a DNS center cluster. And suppose you have already installed the DNS center and you, if any of the new DNS center would like to join the cluster uh, with existing DNS center, then you can select the second option. Need to give some of the IP addressing like the cluster virtual IP addresses. So that is the virtual IP address, which will be useful for your high availability your Linux password, your CLI password, and some of the administrator paraphrase, that is also password. And uh, once you're done with the IP address configuration, you will see this type of message configuration succeeded. So that is how uh, the Megalev configuration can work. Now we, we are going to discuss the high availability part. So in high availability, section, uh, you can see we have three nodes available, right? And all of the three nodes has different uh, same services because it is identical. 
So here you have service A, service A, service A. You have service B, service D, F. So these services are different. But why it is different? Because some of the services are running on this particular node. Some of the services are running on this particular node. Some of the services are running on this particular node. In case of any service related issues. So generally what happens is like identical one node would be active. So all of the service will work uh, on the same node and it gives the information to DN center contextual engine and it, you can see the services are up and running or not. And if in case of any service goes down, suppose services goes down, then the cluster of uh, another node like the standby will become active for that service only, right? So service A from node two will become active and it will give the, uh, it will solve the purpose of the automation or assurance. Suppose entire node goes down, then Again, your node two will become active and node three will become standby. Like so, the, so what about the service B and C? What are the services that, uh, uh, that is going to affect That are examples, service A, B, C, D, that are example. That is not the actual name. Okay. There are so many services. When we have the lab ready, I can show the service as well. Uh, so hold that question till the time, yeah. So we can even <clears throat> distribute a load among the cluster members. I didn't ideally no because uh, whenever uh, the node one is active, that means all the service will run through this node only. But in okay. case any of the service goes down, then your node two will become active for that service only. That is how the architecture is. But you can't do that thing like uh, I, I run five service on this node, five service on this node. That can't work. Okay. So this we have discussed earlier like uh, in design we need to set up site building and floor you need to organize your re region city building then you need to import your floor plans so there is a specific format of floor plans you, you can get it from the ns center design dashboard uh, and then based on that criteria you need to import your floor maps uh, on the site hierarchy and uh, you can place the uh, devices as per the floor plan. Then uh, site specific settings, like some of the settings are global level settings and some of the settings are site specific settings. So many times we have seen that uh, many of the customer has different DHCP server for specific site. So for that, they can use site specific setting, but some of the uh, settings like TACAX or RADIUS, those are the global settings. So that may inherit to all the sites once you create the global setting. Then IP addresses and uh, or IPM. So you can create the IP address uh, information. You can create different types of pool manually. And even if you don't want to do that pool creation manually, then you can use IPM, uh, which is IP service address manager. And in IP service, uh, address manager, you can create uh, or import the uh, IP addresses or uh, pools and that to uh, that particular pools why will will import via API to DNS center. So once you have IPM integration, you can see your existing IP address pool to DNS center or else you can do manual IP address uh, pool creation. Then uh, fourth one is your setting up the wireless SSID where you can manage your wireless fabric uh, SSID. So how you want to manage for fabric or site, that's how you can create the fabric wireless SSID IP pool. You can associate that uh, because most of the time we have seen uh, in true wireless fabric deployment, uh, most of the SSIDs are fabric enabled SSIDs. But many customers are using hybrid model as well. So in hybrid, some of the wireless traffic goes with the legacy way and some of the wireless traffic goes with the fabric enabled way. So uh, for that, you have the specific choice. You can map and uh, create the SSID. And automation, like automate the setup. Yeah, like how you can onboard the WLC, how you can onboard the AP. Once you discover the WLC, you can onboard the AP. So there is a specific workflow when we 
bridge to wireless section. We can discuss that much more in detail. All right, so for policy, as I said, for policy, you can create the virtual network. This is for your reference, like which we have generally discussed earlier, but for reference, I'm just uh, keep telling you that this is the thing you can see, setting up the virtual network, setting up the scalable group. I'll talk deep about this uh, scalable group, uh, but this is the way first, let's complete this. So manage the group policy and manage the VN policy. So scalable group. So first with a virtual network. So virtual network is your VRF. So in SDXS, uh, we have the concept of macro and micro segmentation. So when I say macro segmentation, that is by default VRF based segmentation. So in traditional network, we used to do VRF. We create different VRF and different VRF cannot talk to each other unless we do the route linking, right? The same like here, we have this VN virtual network. We need to create VN to segregate the traffic. That is called your macro segmentation. And scalable group, those are the identity containers. So when I say identity containers, that means like uh, you have guest user, you have HR user, you have contractor, you have finance team, and everything falls under the employee VRF. Suppose you have created employee as a big umbrella, a big VRF. Under that employee, you have different roles of employee, like contractor, guest. Suppose guest is another thing, contractor and uh, other team, like uh, finance, HR, and uh, marketing or sales and other team. So how you can do some sort of policy uh, enforcement? So you can generally get the IP address, see the IP address, create the policy, permit, deny, and all. But here we have this scalable group, which generally refer to as a identity container. Like when I say a contractor, when contractor login to my network, it has the specific identity. So SDA or uh, ICE will provide the specific tag, like this contractor has, uh, I mean, this particular user, is fall under the contractor scalable group. And that contractor scalable group has the specific number, like suppose 17 or 18. So it tagged with this particular number. So whenever or wherever that user is go or ROM, the tag will always carry. So based on the tagging, you can do the segregation or classification of the user in SDA. So that's how a scalable group will create, or you can import those uh, from ICE if you have ICE deployed already. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can do so many things under policy, like managing group policy. So this is the kind of segmentation based on the scalable group tags, like permit, deny. Suppose you want to have the type of policy where employee like a normal employee cannot talk to the contractor or contractor cannot talk to the hr or finance team or sales team right so likewise you can create that type of uh, policy and you can manage those policy under this section as well so provision we discussed that as well earlier so in provision you can create the fabric domains uh, you can assign the device and device role like some of the device are known as border device, some of the device are known as edge device, and some of the device, or I would say one of the device or two of the device, generally known as a control device, control plane device, right? So you can assign and uh, create the specific role of those devices. You can create the fabric. Uh, when I say fabric, we'll discuss um, uh, later what is the fabric and what are the roles, but yeah, this is the falls under provision. So. I'm just taking the reference here. So you can clear, like when we come again on fabric and uh, device, so you can uh, recollect, okay, I saw or I heard fabric under provision. So that's how. Set up host onboarding. So this is also important for wireless and uh, wired traffic. Your host onboarding section will be used and it will map the specific IP pool for specific users like wired versus wireless. It also gives the authentication templates. So 
we have so many templates i would say four templates uh, closed authentication open authentication uh, no authentication and there is another as well i forgot the name but i'll show you when we have the lab ready so those templates can be used when uh, host when you want to make sure that how my host will onboard on my network so if any company has uh, implemented a no authentication template then initially that host gets the ip address and access to the network infrastructure without any authentication but if any company has implemented closed authentication then host gets authenticated based on it based on his or her credential uh, that particular person can be authenticated and once successful authentication done it can get uh, i mean he can get the access of the network right and platform uh, so uh, sorry under provision uh, there is an advanced setting of uh, multicast to enable so when any enterprise has specific requirement of multicast uh, or any of the streaming then they can enable the multicast uh, in the fabric domain we are not going to discuss how multicast work in fabric domain because that is not the part of this course but yeah multicast is the another advanced use case which generally uh, available uh, and most of the users or company are using this multicast as well inside the sdxs fabric for assurance uh, like as i said we have different types of dashboards and uh, we have different types of uh name like device 360 client 360 and application 360 the 360 means you can get all the insight of the specific thing like device 360 means all the insight related to devices your network switches routers everything client means your wired and wireless traffic and application means your any of the real-time applications on which you have implemented the nbar2 license on the devices for uh, dns center as a platform so this is really interesting i would say because if you know we have a couple of api already created inside dns center so i mentioned path trace right earlier i guess someone has asked question how can we do the path trace and what was the outcome uh, when we do the path trace in the dns center so path trace is uh, an path trace is an api which already been there inside dns center you can leverage that api uh, and that is falls under the northbound uh, api so you can see we have for north south east and west right so we have different adapters on east and west side where you can have the cross domain integration like you, if you want to integrate your stealth watch or your DNS spaces or your Cisco Meraki solution, you can do with the adapters. Uh, and if you want to integrate some of the ITSM tools like InfoBlocks or uh, sorry, your uh, ServiceNow, then you can use that. Your IP address management, you can also use that. Uh, for BlueCat and proxy server, you can use to integrate it with adapters. So we have that adapters available under platform. You can leverage that pl uh, platform and you can integrate that uh, particular solution within the DNS center. Then intent API, that means your assurance works on API, path trace, command runner, template, anything like you can see here, we have so many things, same software image management. Everything is identical, uh, isolated and uh, everything, every container has different API and the API is communicating uh each with each other okay so for third party as well you have you need to create any of the software developer uh kits and you can use those kits to leverage to patch the device inventory data or topology data or any of the device related data so i'll show you that uh, when we come to the platform section how you can do that generally so far we are good with dns center overview everyone yes, sir. Okay, so let's have a five minute pause. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. I, I have some few basic questions. Is that okay to ask you? Yeah, 
yeah yeah please go ahead yeah uh, this dna center it's a kind of uh, network centralized uh, controller which is, can be used for management and inventory and automation right correct is, is that going to reduce any existing network device i hope no right so we will be keeping this uh, to uh, manage a uh, uh, network and uh, do the automation correct yeah i mean definitely uh, so so, so if uh, we, it, yeah yeah go ahead yeah if we have a dna center in our uh, enterprise let's say mm -hmm. we don't need uh, any of the nms software or uh, uh, let's say even the still watch right as far as my understanding so that completely completely depends on company's requirement yeah so, because uh, the dna uh, center can cover the functions of the still watch as well as the nms and the inventory is our tools no st stealth watch is different cisco okay. stealth watch is different uh, tool and that is okay. broadly for security and threat uh, analytics uh, related things mm -hmm. uh, dna center is not providing that level of security information okay. like any okay. any but of the threat or any of the attacks or cyber attacks are going or any of the malware mm -hmm. uh, available okay. on your network device that information cisco dna center will not provide so for that mm -hmm. if you have cisco stealth watch you can integrate stealth watch with dns center and dns center can give you the com comprehensive view and mm -hmm. uh, you can page the detail on okay. holistic way uh, from the platform as a report okay. on the table okay. yeah okay okay so in that case the dna center uh, does it have a, a consolidated reports of our floor map devices like yeah, uh, yeah. correct so these de devices as the uh, access details these things right yeah 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 so and uh, does it act as a, a, a backup node let's say we uh, have our floor map some of our uh, devices the network devices are uh, failing the configuration so can we restore it using the dna center some of i i missed your question can you please repeat yeah it? let's say let's say we uploaded our floor map in dna center okay mm -hmm. our network is in dna center now Uh, DNA center we can control using our network with DNA center. With this situation, okay, some of our network device, let's say our configuration is lost. Correct. Can we use DNA center uh, to restore the configuration because it's already uploaded in the DNA center, right? Correct. So uh, there is a specific uh, compliance tab under uh, mm -hmm. provision, I would say. So okay. in which you can find the past configuration. and suppose mm -hmm. like uh, we encourage everyone to do all the configuration changes through gui dns mm -hmm. center itself but suppose okay. anyone any any of the network engineer has some made some change on any yeah. of the network device and it it got lost right so you can yeah. identify the configuration drift uh like what was changed which line of yeah. configuration get so, changed so basically and, it has uh, the revisioning uh, uh, details Yes, 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 yes. All the revisioning. But, we can go but, back to the. But it has the specific limit uh, uh -huh. to store the configuration, right? So, uh, and each and every has each and every component has the limit. We okay. cannot store okay. unlimited data on any of the box. So uh -huh. okay. there is a specific limit. After that, it will not store. Then you need to uh, uh, have the backup uh, storage server so that that storage server can. fetch all the historical uh, configuration rest mm -hmm. uh, your configuration will get changed uh, with some few days i would say okay okay so in that case uh, the cisco dna uh, center is intended uh, to do the control and automation only not for the backups or inventory yeah things. yeah yeah absolutely so inventory management can be uh, done in dna uh, center no my basic like, question not like sorry <laughs> my basic yeah, yeah. question i'm just trying to understand no worries and which are the which are the uh, uh, you know functionality of the enterprise uh, segment we can use the dna center uh -huh. let's say backups inventories and uh, uh, mo reports monitoring yeah. control auto report these, monitoring assurance yeah. assurance then uh, exactly exactly uh, policy, on this part like segmentation policy creating okay. spxs fabric uh, mm -hmm. checking your endpoints like whether it is iot your um, uh, normal endpoint or what you can track that endpoint as well some of the track uh, some of the endpoints are not uh, normal endpoint like right? mm -hmm. 
uh, some of the endpoints are silent host so okay. they, yeah. that that host can wake on the specific packet that is called magic packet so uh -huh. okay. for that you can use sdxs or dns center and all so many things okay. but generally you are right uh, okay. the main uh, use case is automation assurance and the policy and segmentation these three main okay. uses Perfect. and easy Perfect. to manage your network like easy to upgrade easy to monitor and all okay okay, okay. fine this is what i want to understand thank you yeah yeah now so uh, guys uh, let's have a 5 minute of break uh, to time is now 12:23 so we'll meet after five minutes or three minutes. So twelve twenty-seven, okay, or twelve twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah. So now we are going to discuss some some of the concepts around SD access, and for that, let me just switch my slide. Uh, so uh, when we talk about SD access, that is your software defined access. Uh, and that is based on the uh, traditional, uh, uh, sorry, that is based on your DNS center appliance. And uh, uh, that is the new technology which we generally use uh, to automate the fabric. So when I say fabric, that is your, uh, that is your underlay and overlay. So when I say underlay means your core distribution and access are connected. You can see your access are, access and distribution are connected, distribution to core are, core is connected and when any network engineer is do, doing any of the network changes or configuration it is uh, manual and uh, cli based right with sdxs we can have this automated and everything which falls under sdxs will convert into the fabric so we'll discuss fabric what is fabric and all uh, so this is the physical topology you can see your server, your uh, distribution switches, your core devices that are connected. And on top of that, you can see your overlay topology. So the same topology, but on overlay, you are using a different logical topology. The physical topology is different. The logical topology is different. When I say logical topology, that means any tunneled architecture. So whether it is your GRE or IPsec or MPLS or LISP or VXLAN, right? So whenever you are creating any sort of tunneled architecture on top of your physical network topology, that overlay network will called as a fabric, right? So fabric is the combination of your underlay and overlay. So mostly overlay topologies are created on top of the physical topology. And those overlay topology will be used uh, through different overlay protocols like IPsec, GRE, whatever i um, uh, just mentioned right so so that is the fabric so here on overlay topology you are doing the encapsulation and decapsulation because whenever you are creating any of the tunneled architecture the encapsulation will start you are uh, adding the new header and on the far end side you are removing the uh, newly added header that's how it works and there is a specific requirement to implement SDXS within your network infrastructure because it it has the too many it has too many uh, encapsulation and decapsulation uh, flows. So uh, 9100 jumbo MTU is required to have SDXS working, right? So you can see the different nodes are just mere traffic forwarder. So that nodes are just forward the traffic back and forth but that for uh, that particular nodes are not part of the fabric fabric consists of the device which generally do encapsulation and decapsulation so any device who do encapsulation and decapsulation the device will be part of the fabric so uh, the idea is like you can see a user behind this vpn adapter it is using the private IP. So whenever we are using VPN, uh, and you must have seen a couple of times, like whenever we are connecting to VPN, we are using company's intranet network, the private IP addressing scheme or uh, uh, the confidential IP addressing scheme of that company or intranet, right? So this is because like 
we are doing the encapsulation and decapsulation. We are just hiding our uh, IP. And uh, on top of that, we are uh, adding the new IP header. And irrespective of any of the nodes, any of the BGPAs, we are just creating the tunnel from your home to HQ. Now in SDXs, uh, the main use case of SDXs is you can leverage this macro and micro segmentation and policy-based identity uh, and segmentation. So uh, I told you earlier that macro falls under the VRF and micro falls under the segmentation. Within VRF, if you want to do any sort of uh, permit and deny actions, then it comes with this micro segmentation. So for that, you can assign the SGD to specific users and that user will be uh, acting as per the policy which you have implemented. So same like here in this diagram, you can see we have group one, group two, and we have virtual network of employees and we have virtual network of IoT, right? And we have group three and group four. So in group three, we have two bulbs. Group four, we have one IP phone and one of the uh, meeting console, right? Here in group one, we have one laptop and in group two, we have another laptop with uh, user. So whenever any user wants to communicate to other user or other thing, it will start to uh, start encapsulation of the traffic because in SDXs, uh, you are using the VXLAN as a encapsulation protocol, as a data plane protocol, right? Why VXLAN? There is a big story behind that. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, there is a specific use case and uh, native VXLAN header, if you check on any of the RFC or any of the document, it is different. And in Cisco's SDXs, it is different because we have tweaked the header and uh, we are using the specific header of VXLAN, specific version of uh, VXLAN, which is called your GPO header, your group policy object header in VXLAN. And in that header, uh, there is a specific field of your SGT and VN. So whenever any fabric edge or any of the access node is creating the tunnel, suppose uh, from A to B. So it has the capacity, the VXLAN header has the capacity to carry the group tags, scalable group tags across different uh, access nodes. And the use case would very unique, I would say, because based on that uh, header, we can implement and enforce the policy that this user cannot be uh, communicate to this user and likewise. So we'll see the header part as well. So data plane encapsulation, you can see uh, the VXLAN header. So this is the 50 byte of overhead uh, you can consider on the, uh, on the original IP packet. So that's why we required 9100 of MTU uh, across the fabric nodes. So when I say fabric nodes, that means each and every device who will be part of the encapsulation and decapsulation process. So that device are the fabric nodes and uh, all the fabric nodes should have Chumbo MTU frame supported. Now uh, you have your original data payload, then your original IP, head, uh, IP header, then original ethernet, your layer two frame, right? And on top of that, you have your VXLAN header. In VXLAN header, we have that VRF and SGT related information which it carries from one fabric node to another fabric node. And on top of that, VXLAN header is encapsulated with this UDP transport header, 4789 is the protocol, uh, sorry, port number, and then another IP header. So this is how the frame looks like or packet looks like, you can see. And uh, based on that, you can identify so much encapsulation, decapsulation happens for each and every traffic, right? So that's why uh, 9100 is mandatory within fabric. Now let's discuss some of the key components of SDXs. So you can see we have SDXs or I would say we have DNS center and in DNS center we have 
uh, policy automation and analytics. When I say analytics, that is the part of your uh, assurance automation. That is the part of your all the provisioning related things and policy. That is the part of your ICE related. ICE is the critical com uh, in component in SDXs. Without ICE, Cisco ICE, you cannot have this SDXs. Uh, so SDXs, you can create the fabric. But you cannot leverage this policy and identity based segmentation. So, previously, when this SDX was launched in earlier version, it was mandatory that you should have your eyes to be integrated with the NF center. And now we have that uh, flexibility. Suppose any customer do not want to leverage this important use case of identity based policy and segmentation, then they can get rid of the eyes. Uh, and uh, they can have this uh, fabric, right? But there is uh, there is no meaning without eyes because this use case is really important, uh, which decouples your security and QoS related uh, requirement from your VLAN and IP addresses. So we are actually moving from IP addressing identification to the actual name identity uh, name related identification. So. IoT network or employee network, we can easily identify which user get assigned to which place, right? And if a user is moving, suppose one floor to other floor, one office to other office, suppose in one fabric, you have a couple of buildings, right? And user is moving from one building to other building, other building to floor, other floor and all. Then also the identity will always stick to that user. So you don't need to change the IP address or access list on each and every Hops. So initially, someone has asked fragmented security question, right? So in fragmented security, what happens for roaming related issues? Uh, like on one edge node, you have done some manual configuration, some access list. And if user is moving to one building to other building, on that gateway node, the access list is not mentioned or some of the thing is mismatched then the security may breach. Uh, so that type of uh, breaches we have seen, uh, but in SDXs, the user has the specific tag carried. And whenever it goes, whenever he goes, uh, and the tag will carry, because each and every fabric edge node has the specific Anycast gateway. So we don't need to really change the gateway as well. In manual network, we need to think, OK, this user, for this user, uh, we have specific VLAN, and uh, we, the gateway may change, right? But here in SDXs, we are using the Anycast gateway. So for user mobility, it is seamless, whether it is wired or wireless. Uh, the main use case is like automated network fabric, where you can create the fabric within the DNS center. Everything is automated. Some of the configuration, you need to do it manually because uh, out of the fabric configuration, whatever the fabric, out of the fabric configuration, like the uh, connection to your data center, connection to your internet, right? Connection to your DMZ zone, that connection, you need to do it manually. Rest, everything is automated inside the fabric. For identity-based policy segmentation, we have discussed a lot uh, inside and telemetry. So yeah, so whenever uh, any any challenge we may face related with the user or client experience or performance related thing, we can get the insight uh, on the DNS center under application behavior or user behavior, right? If suppose user is complaining that, hey, I'm going to building number one and I'm getting a good connection, good internet speed and everything is good. But when I go to building number two, I'm not getting that much of uh, that much level of speed or that much level of satisfaction. So that level of insight, you can get it on DNS center. You can easily identify what is the behavior uh, when the user was on building number one and what was the uh, behavior when the user was on building number two, right? So uh, again, the same story like, uh, the uh, traditional network inconsistent configuration manual error prone in DNS center SDXS solution. We are using the business intent 
implement that in, uh, intent using the automation feature and the telemetry which is coming from the network device to back to the dns center and dns center will give you give you the uh, graphical representation but here you can see the new two points are added one is border and one is control plane right this two new point uh, name has added so we will discuss more on this too because uh, as of now it is really impossible to discuss in few minutes because it is really deep the functionality of border and uh, control plane now uh, how it works what is the purpose and uh, how the packet is going to border how the packet is going to the control plane or what type of query is going and all but you can just remember or just mention so that next time whenever we meet uh, you can know that okay we have seen somewhere border or control plane or ice so ice is the critical component when you want to leverage the policy and segmentation and it, it gets integrated with dns center with uh, px grid integration so in ice ice should be compatible with dns center version and uh, we have kind of restful api and px grid uh, integration which we generally do when we want to integrate ice uh, to dns center so whatever the business or policy related information you uh, create on dns center that get puts that get pushed to ice and ice then later on push to the fabric edge nodes so dns center will not push any of the ice related or security related information on fabric edge nodes rather ice will push everything on the fabric edge node but whatever you are doing on dns center that goes to ice ice will push to the fabric nodes that is how the flow is so based on the authentication so uh, I'll, I'll walk you through the flow traffic flow when a device get connected how the packet goes to ice what type of packet goes and how ice is going to assign the vlan or sgt but on high level for now you can understand that uh, whenever any endpoint gets connected on the fabric edge node or fabric device uh, after successful authentication that particular endpoint or user get assigned to the specific sgt right so initially i told that uh, we are just get rid of the ip addressing and we are now moving towards the identity based solution so group one user one uh, user one falls under this employee virtual network and we have the specific SGT, like 17, right? So that user has the specific tag. Uh, now that user goes from one building to other building, the tag will always uh, always there for this particular user. Like the connection is there and the tag will always there. Once that user gets disconnected, the tag will remove. Now, uh, within the VRF, if we want, to have any specific sort of uh, access deny combination then another user uh, within the same identity container can have the same tag like uh, for under employee virtual network we have a uh, contractor so if both are contractor then you can assign both to 17 tag but suppose one is contractor and one is hr then you cannot assign uh, both to the 17 tag, right? So that tag may vary under different VNs. And that tag you don't need to assign, ICE will, uh, you don't need to worry on that. ICE will automatically assign to the specific uh, uh, device. But you can do your intent uh, configuration, or I would say uh, make the uh, DNS center aware that, okay, whenever a uh, guest or any of the contractor comes, please assign uh, to uh, contractor SGT. And whenever any user with HR credential comes, then please assign to uh, HR SGT. So based on that, it will convert the intent into a configuration. It will uh, acknowledge to ICE and ICE will push the configuration. Now uh, you can see fabric edge node, the node on which the encapsulation happens. That means the VXLAN tunnel creates. So it provides the first hop 
services and uh, the exit like whenever any user wants uh, to exit from the fabric because fabric generally means like you have your internal network right that means your fabric you are the part of fabric but when user wants to communicate to internet then it has to go via border and border has the capacity uh, to forward the traffic to the internet or out of the uh, organization and uh, we have control plane so that is the separate role and separate uh, device or you can use border as a control plane as well like you can assign both role to one device as well based on the uh, device model and scale vector but the functionality will change so that's why the role of device is important initially in dns center we discuss we need to assign the role of border access node edge node right so role of device is important when you are creating the fabric okay yeah so this is related with wlc now so you have the wlc and that will outside of fabric you can see the cloud whatever the cloud is there that is your fabric whatever outside is there that is your out of fabric device so wlc will remain outside so it will remain outside and then also it provides the fabric enabled ssid how uh, how like the fabric is connected to uh, sorry wlc is connected to the border and border has this capacity to to exchange the fabric information to wlc uh, back and forth and wlc will forward the information to border how it is going to forward how the packet flow we are going to discuss in upcoming sessions but on high level you can see this is the placement and most of the customer may place wlc near to the uh, fabric border or wherever the fabric edge nodes are there it has the latency requirement specific latency requirement so if fabric uh, sorry wlc is far from your data center or uh, from other side then it must need to fulfill the latency requirement so here in this slide you can see my wlc is on data center right but then my latency requirement is this minimum 20 sorry uh, 20 ms of latency should match from the access point or user to the wlc and then only then it provides the fabric enabled ssids and then your wired and wireless traffic would be identical in the data plane side control plane flow would remain changed but the data plane will remain the same and then uh, you can implement the policy on wired as well as wireless traffic in uh, irrespective of the uh, connection uh, excuse me uh, that's sorry did you mean minimum latency requirement or maximum yeah yeah minimum minimum 20 milliseconds so like uh, do you have requirements like we want only uh, like minimum uh, that there should be 20 ms latency or like maximum 20 ms is fine no 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 minimum at, at least 20 ms so is it, like, is, it, is it like nowadays we are designing network based on we should to have we, we we should have at least 100 ms latency requirement 100 ms 100 ms uh, latency requirement and like like the lesser is always better right correct so, so we have yes. maximum latency requirement no like uh, we can have only up to 20 ms more than 20 ms is not good so Correct. in that case design the network flow you said many yes. i was a bit confused there oh sorry for that but yeah i mean that is maximum. 20 milliseconds so so that will be, be maintained if it is right. less than 20 ms then it is good but not more than 20 ms uh, okay right and uh, one more thing uh, when yeah, you said we place the WLC near the fabric edge, do you mean like a no, controller no. or like a wireless uh, transmitters we place it near the fabric edge? A WLC should always place near to border or your control plane node or your data center. Suppose you have 
your data like, uh, i'm yeah. referring like uh, sorry let me clear myself uh, suppose when we say that we are point uh, placing wlc so basically it's a wireless then control plane device right so it is mm, placed, correct. yeah so i think when you say we place it near endpoints so those are like wireless antennas or uh, wireless transmitters right no no we we need to place it near border not endpoints because endpoints are associated with access point right so right. so access point will create a kind of cap cap tunnel uh, okay. to the wlc right for control plane traffic right. and uh, yeah even so data plane traffic also flows through cap cap no sorry even data plane traffic is also transmitted through cap cap no 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 in sdxs the data plane traffic will go via vxlan that is the okay. catch that is the catch in sdxs specifically for wireless if you okay. go with traditional ott over the top wireless deployment then your okay. control and data plane both the traffic goes via cap web but okay. here in sdxs for specific fabric enabled ssids your control plane traffic goes via cap web tunnel and that is then yeah yeah any questions uh, that's it and this order to clear Adarsh, can you finish that last one you were trying to mention, right? And the cap pass is going via control plane. The other one, can you complete yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So other traffic, the data plane traffic will go via VXLAN. Why? Yeah. Because in VXLAN, we are using the specific header which we generally, uh, which I just showed you, right? Which carries the SGT and uh, VN information, and due to that only. we are providing users to seamless policy based identity and segmentation whether it is wireless or wired traffic so any user gets connected on any of the access point right based on the authentication it also get assigned to specific sgt tag identity container and the specific vm that means virtual network now suppose that user wants to communicate to other user but the uh, policy is not uh allowing so how we can know that uh, this is how we can enforce that type of use case so for that vxlan is only the uh, thing uh, whatever we are using for wireless uh, wired the same thing we are using for wireless for data plane traffic but we will dig deep into the wireless traffic flow when we go to the packet uh, forwarding mechanism and all but yeah. on high level we are good actually thanks so this border and control plane we are placing at dc only right no no border and control plane will be in the fabric side only so if you have the dc but you are creating the campus all the fabric edge needs to be connected to the uh, intermediate suppose you have this type of network right like core distribution access and on core suppose you have one border and one uh, control plane node so everything will part of the same fabric so you need to maintain minimum latency requirement unless and until it is meeting the requirement then we are good whether irrespective of place data center or where okay okay sir okay. now uh, let's see this component and roles so so is is just i wanted to show this call distribution and access so distribution generally are the traffic forwarders or most of the time it do l2 spanning tree related things but uh, here in sd access it is just traffic forwarder it just read out the traffic from back and forth to border and control plane node from fabric edge node right so these nodes are not part of the fabric so whenever you may get asked that type of question suppose uh, like you have some of the traffic forwarders or intermediate nodes so the intermediate nodes will be not part of the fabric so please keep in mind now uh let's uh, get some high level info on the control plane data plane and policy plane so control plane here we are using lisp why we are using lisp i'll tell you uh because in lisp we have suppose we have so many routing protocols you also learn so many routing protocols like ospf eigrp isis so many things right uh but why we chose lisp on sdx in sdx 
for control trend because we want to get rid of that model where each and every router has the identical data, each and every router wants to push updates, each and every router wants to uh, maintain the same routing table, same uh, uh, information and all. Here, we have created kind of setup, like specifically in Lisp, there is a mechanism where one of the device is acting as a map server. And that same device can be acting as a map resolver as based on the capacity, right? And that map server, map resolver terminology has changed in SDXs as a control plane now. Now, uh, you must have learned about DNS, how DNS works, right? So DNS works based on the request. Like any user wants to get the IP address uh, against the specific name, like it is uh we generally ask the uh dns uh, server that i want to reach to this particular website please provide me the ip address that is how dns work generally the same thing here in sd access on control plane uh specifically map server map resolver or control plane node right acting as a centralized server which has all the information when i say all the information that means it knows the topology, it knows which node is connected where, it, it, it knows, uh, it has the table of uh, host tracking database. So whenever any new device gets onboarded on the network, right, it always first register itself to the control plane. It says that, hey, I am this device, please note down my IP address this, and I am behind this, fabrication node. So here you can see this is control plane node. Here I have my fabrication node. When I say fabrication node, that means your access device, which do generally encapsulation and decapsulation, right? And this device is the first point of contact of any of the user. Same like this, right? This is also the fabrication node. But suppose consider that there is a one user attached uh, after this particular node then this is the fabric edge node. Suppose here there is a user connect here or here, then this is the fabric edge node. Whenever any user gets connect, then that node is fabric edge node. So when any user gets connected, the fabric edge will register that user to the control plane. It tells control plane that I have one user with this IP address behind my uh, back or behind my uh, connection, right? So control plane has the entry that, okay, uh, user 1111 is connected behind this fabric edge node. So it has the entry. So 1111 connected to, uh, suppose 10, 10, 10, 10, behind 10, 10, 10, 10. So that is how the mapping will look like on the control plane node. So that's how it maintains the database now any user wants to reach to that user so it asks to control plan that hey i want to reach 1111 where should i go so control plan responds to the fabric edge that please respond to that end user that you need to go to 1111 you can go to 10 10 10 10 so 10 10 10 10 would be the uh, location of the fabric edge where the host is connected so that's how the information get exchange via control plane node and control plane node is the brain of stxs uh, fabric that's why many of the customer is using the ha on control plane so they can have two control plane in one fabric so if anyone goes down uh, another one take the backup and it has the exchange uh, it, it it will exchange the information but suppose in this type of scenario, if one control plan, we have one control plan and one control plan only gets down, then your existing data traffic will remain flow. So your existing, whatever the entry, which has resolved so far, the traffic will exchange after uh, some timers. So we have, I guess, uh, 30 minutes of timer after it gets uh, disconnected. So I we will discuss list in more detail. I will show you another PPT, another diagram, another packet, everything I'll show you. 
but on high level you can consider why we are using list because uh, we don't want that type of uh, routing update related protocols which keep on pushing the right uh, routing updates to each and every node and each and every node has identical database and any route go goes down it it makes the update to other node or suppose if we are using uh, uh, ospf then uh, it flood the router lsa and all right and make the spf computation computation high if we are using the single area but multiple area it has its own complexity and uh, challenges but lisp is kind of pool based mechanism so most of the routing protocols are push based it forward the updates and it fill the routing table to other uh, network node but here in lisp if you want to get some information you need to ask otherwise it will not provide so that's how the list works on control plane uh data plane we have discussed vxn why vxn policy plane is really interesting it is based on the cisco trust sec so cisco trust sec is the principal protocol uh, will be used for policy plane uh, and how we are actually enforcing classifying the user that is also very important to know like when any user gets connected based on the credential how my eyes will know that this user is the contractor this user is the guest user and uh, the permission how my eyes is enforcing the permission on the fabric edge that for this user i don't want to forward the traffic versus other users so uh, you know like this is the campus fabric and uh, we discuss this thing I, I told you earlier right in my earlier slide we have ncp ndp remember so ncp is network control platform ndp is your network data platform data platform will fall under the uh, assurance all the assurance related thing comes here ndp and all the automation related thing falls here ncp nice is the individual entity which use, will be useful for uh, uh, policy and segmentation we have two border nodes and most of the time uh, based on different device model and scale customer are using border plus control plane so this this device only acting as a border and this device is only acting as a control plane same like that but here in this diagram we have segregated or separate uh, control plane node which is connected to wlc and that wlc is also connected to the border for fabric enabled ssid the connection from control plane to wlc is really important because wlc will keep adding the wireless host entry to the control plane database how it will enter we'll discuss that in more, much more detail but just to give you on high level this is how the flow would look like uh, border would be used for internal traffic exit or external traffic exit when i say internal traffic exit that means uh, you have some data center which is connected and some of the applications are running on that data center and if any of the user wants to reach to that data center then uh, that border will be acting as a internal border but suppose if any border, uh, suppose any user want to uh, reach to in internet, right? So that border will act as an external border because it, it gives the internet connectivity and uh, it has the default route. So when no one, uh, suppose any, any route is not found on control plane, it will ask fabric edge to reach to border and border will take care of the uh, traffic so based on the destination it will find the destination if it if it, not, if it is not matching based on the specific route then it will forward to the internet otherwise for internet prefixes it will forward to the data center we'll discuss much, that much more in detail but on high level i hope you understood the fabric role and terminology how uh, what is the border what is the control plan what is the fabric edge and all
because this slide is talking about that only uh whatever i just told uh, so you can see the control plane nodes map system that manage endpoint to device relationship when i say endpoint to device relationship that means endpoint to fabric edge relationship right so whenever any fabric edge gets connected to uh, whenever any endpoints get connected to fabric edge uh, it has the mapping of uh, in mapping of that information okay this user is behind this fabric edge this user is behind this fabric edge suppose this user is moving from one fabric edge to other fabric edge uh, like if this is roaming right so then also this control plane has the information it get the repressed entry uh, with the new registration request and it will delete the old mapping from the database the same thing which we discussed for fabric border nodes for external border uh, uh, we are using the fabric border node or internal as well so if one border is acting as a internal uh, external and an internal both then we are calling that border as a anywhere border and fabrication not you know already the first point of authentication and first point of contact of wired and wireless endpoints and wireless control okay so here i told you earlier that we could use intermediate node based on the scale based on the size of company or uh, organization right so if we want to have reachability or port port density are very less then we can use intermediate node as well and that are the node which generally forward the traffic that uh, they do they don't know the encapsulation or nothing they just forward the traffic and that will not be the part of the fabric all the blue nodes you can see are the part of the fabric right all right so we are now good uh, and uh, i guess we are top uh on top of that or i guess 12 minutes but yeah any anyone has any doubt so we have finished two section today introduction to dns center and sdxs uh the walkthrough is pending once the lab is ready i'll show you the walkthrough how you can see check and all but so the lab um when uh when will be ready so what i want it to be we do need to attend that uh, yeah yeah that's I'll, I'll answer that uh guys uh see once our lab is ready once the theoretical part will be ready okay uh, once he is done with the theoretical part uh probably after the next week we'll have the lab session okay in between we are getting lab ready okay okay so the next week the class will be there correct uh, another session will be there or, uh, or the, this is the, the session okay. will be there right so it's a, it's a part of our uh, station right lab will be included in that hmm? sir one question yeah please um is it saturday sunday class or just sunday class it's a saturday sunday class okay so next week we have class on saturday as well yeah, yeah. same right, time that's, uh, that's how we have planned right does correct correct, correct. if yeah. any changes are required then i'll let you know in advance yeah yeah we'll uh, he can update us but uh, it's designed for saturday sunday if any changes then we'll update you guys okay the time will be same session 11 a.m Oh, correct okay and this recording will be shared right yeah later it will be shared